Do you? No, no. Well, I don't really believe any uh, papers all the time. Put it that way. Not even. <laughs> Hard there. Senses for the truth. Yes, indeed. Hard there. Yes, senses indeed. for the truth. I thought this place looked like the House of Lords, but then it was far too full. <laughs> no wake as well. That's, that's the other thing. That's right. Fiona, the, uh, Gorbachev, um, uh, what, is it, what, is it, what is it like through a woman's eyes? I mean, he's certainly the most approachable Russian that we've ever seen. Do you mm. find him an attractive man? Well, uh, yes. I mean, I think the extraordinary thing about him, he is incredibly charismatic and enigmatic. And I do find him very, very attractive. I think... Uh, I think what he's doing is quite wonderful, but also he and Raisa are quite the most incredible PR team, I think, for their country. I mean, she is superb as well. Do you think, Peter, that Reagan's had a rough deal from the press and the cartoonists? They've got a little rough on him just, just recently, um, but uh, not as rough as they were on Nixon or Carter or mm. Ford. And I don't think he would have noticed. <laughs> <laughs> what about Mrs. T and uh, Mr. Gorbachev? Was there a meeting of minds there? I think there must have been, but she's a very agreeable woman. I, I'm not very much in favour of what she does, quite frankly. Uh, and, uh, but I think that she is a very vulnerable woman. Uh, from what I've noticed. You started to twinkle while you said that. <laughs> yes, well, I do twinkle, and I imagine that they get on rather well. They get on rather well, because they're both very intelligent. Uh, I don't think he ever had a nanny, so he isn't uh, <laughs> at all <laughs> worried about that. He's not defensive about that. Mm. And uh, I think there's a sort of directness there which is engaging. Now, let me ask you about you. You have the advantage, of course, of understanding what they're all talking about. Can you make yourself understood in all known tongues? No. And I don't speak... I speak Russian uh, well enough to understand what they're saying, but not often well enough to answer without a little assistance. Do you do and it Occasionally, some of them. I mean, I would find it difficult under Brezhnev if I didn't know what he was talking about most of the time. Did he? Oof. <laughs> there was a rather charming story that when Chernenko died, uh, patriotically, uh, giving way to Gorbachev, uh, when Chernenko died, uh, there was uh, not an autopsy, but at least an examination of the causes of death, which were published. And one of the causes of death was cirrhosis of the liver. And I was told that a great wave of sympathy went out throughout Russia because they realized he was human after all. Oh. <laughs> You've eaten around the world, haven't you? What is the most extraordinary dish that's ever been placed before you? I think in the poorest province of China, which is Gansu, where the average age is something absolutely miserable uh, and where they're very courageous very tough people living in sand i mean with nothing at all the governor of the state put another little dish of the many thousands which we're all used to in chinese restaurants which had something looking like india rubbers enclosed in a kind of loose aspic and he said this you gotta try <laughs> Well, I didn't like the look of it, really, frankly, and I said, uh, w uh, what, uh, what is it? He said, oh, what the... <laughs> <laughs> I had to try. And I put it in my mouth, and it had the consistency of phlegm. <laughs> which is not something you voluntarily put into your mouth. <laughs> it's somebody else's, isn't it? And it had... It, 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 it not only looked like an India rubber, but it really tasted no more than an India rubber, and I couldn't understand how one could find it wonderful because I can't remember the taste now mm. except in association with the India rubber. I swallowed it with difficulty and then I asked him what it was and it turned out to be the pads on the bottom of camel's feet. <laughs> the sort of thing that, that your nanny would have said, don't touch that. <laughs> <laughs> you never know where it's been. <laughs> Are you 
you sure you were meant to eat it, not clean your shoes with it? No, you're, <laughs> meant, you're meant to eat it. And then I said, in order to make conversation and to forget what I'd just eaten, <laughs> what do you do with the rest of the camel in this poorest <laughs> province? He said, oh, that no good to eat. <laughs> <laughs> Tremendous delicacy. Only at the bottom of the feet. Yes. The Peter was talking about this uh, terrible attempt at a, a sex instruction that he had. Did you suffer that? Yeah, well, I never knew anything. I didn't know until far too late. Um, I found out by mistake how babies are born. Uh, but then uh, we had those Russian toys which you unscrew oh, and there's yeah. a small... <laughs> and I thought people were born fully clothed. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, when you say you found out too late, do you mean you had two children by that time, or what? <laughs> yes, no, I had four. <laughs> but were they happy, your school days? I must say, I almost left for home the first day. I was serving some haddock to some of the other boys, the older ones. I was being inured into this system. And the headmaster appeared, who was a clergyman. The permanent smile <laughs> never stopped smiling. And apparently a f very large photograph of Betty Grable mm -hmm. had been discovered in some locker, dressed in a one-piece bathing costume with a beach ball. <laughs> and he said, Who is responsible for this filth? <laughs> <laughs> and I stood there with my hat. I had nothing to do with it, thank God. And nobody owned up. So he said with his robes and that mortarboard, when I discover the culprit, and discover him, I will. <laughs> I shall beat him. I'm in need of exercise. <laughs> and started going away, and the wind took these robes up, and I thought, this is it. I'm leaving. Because it was your photograph. Well, it wasn't my photograph at all. I've never really been particularly drawn to Betty Grable. <laughs> well, you're, not you're not sort of, at that age, you can't reply, you know, says, who's responsible? You can't say 20th century fox and uh, <laughs> hope to escape. <laughs> we had an awful master. He's obviously a very sad soul, but he used to invite you in to talk about beating. He didn't actually beat people very often, but he'd say, have you ever ever had your bare bottom beaten very, very hard. <laughs> An awful voice, I don't know that. Would you, what would you expect it to feel like? Oh. <laughs> awful, sir. Awful. Is that the adjective you'd use? Just awful? Don't you think worse than awful? My goodness, you needed a sandwich after an hour a day. <laughs> <laughs> well, it explains Dickens, really, in many ways. We had one, too. We, we, when we arrived at the school, I remember that shocked me terribly. Um, we were taken to tea with the headmaster, the same headmaster, and there were some cakes and a very phallic eclair, which crowned this selection of cakes. And all the boys, rather shyly, took small cakes and bits of Dundee, <laughs> things like that, you know. And suddenly the headmaster's voice rose above the thing and said, Will no one take the eclair? <laughs> oh, very well. <laughs> <laughs> and white foam came out of it. <laughs> Are you the sort of man to make New Year's resolutions? No, I'm very inquisitive what's going to happen. I, um, as life gets longer, I've always made it one of my aims, even when I was quite small, to reach 2,000. <laughs> as it's getting awfully close, I'm now planning to reach 2,005. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. <laughs> I can't think of anything else. Well, I do hope you make it. <laughs> so do I. <laughs> Thank you very much. That uh, is all we I have... hope to have you along. <laughs> <laughs> but that is all we have time for this very evening. Uh, next week's lineup includes...